June 14, Elijah confronts King Ahaziah. After King Ahab's death, the land of Moab rebelled against Israel. One day, Israel's new king, Ahaziah, fell through the latticework of an upper room at his palace in Samaria and was seriously injured. So he sent messengers to the temple of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether he would recover. But the angel of the Lord told Elijah, who was from Tishbe, Go and confront the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, Is there no god in Israel? Why are you going to Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether the king will recover? Now, therefore, this is what the Lord says. You will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will surely die. So Elijah went to deliver the message. When the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, Why have you returned so soon? They replied, A man came up to us and told us to go back to the king and give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Is there no God in Israel? Why are you sending men to Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether you will recover? Therefore, because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will surely die. What sort of man was he? the king demanded. What did he look like? They replied, He was a hairy man, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. Elijah from Tishbe, the king exclaimed. Then he sent an army captain with fifty soldiers to arrest him. They found him sitting on top of a hill. The captain said to him, Man of God, the king has commanded you to come down with us. But Elijah replied to the captain, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you and your fifty men. Then fire fell from heaven and killed them all. So the king sent another captain with fifty men. The captain said to him, Man of God, the king demands that you come down at once. Elijah replied, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you and your fifty men. And again, the fire of God fell from heaven and killed them all. Once more the king sent a third captain with fifty men, but this time the captain went up the hill and fell to his knees before Elijah. He pleaded with him, O man of God, please spare my life and the lives of these your fifty servants. See how the fire from heaven came down and destroyed the first two groups, but now please spare my life. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him, and don't be afraid of him. So Elijah got up and went with him to the king. And Elijah said to the king, This is what the Lord says. Why did you send messengers to Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether you will recover? Is there no god in Israel to answer your question? Therefore, because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will surely die. So Ahaziah died, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Since Ahaziah did not have a son to succeed him, his brother Joram became the next king. This took place in the second year of the reign of Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The rest of the events in Ahaziah's reign are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Joram reigns in Israel. Ahab's son Joram began to rule over Israel in the 18th year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 12 years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight but not to the same extent as his father and mother. He at least tore down the sacred pillar of Baal that his father had set up. Nevertheless, he continued in the sins that Jeroboam son of Nebat had committed and led the people of Israel to commit. War between Israel and Moab King Mesha of Moab was a sheep breeder. He used to pay the king of Israel an annual tribute of 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But after Ahab's death, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Joram promptly mustered the army of Israel and marched from Sumeria. On the way, he sent this message to King Jehoshaphat of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you join me in battle against him? And Jehoshaphat replied, Why, of course, you and I are as one. My troops are your troops, and my horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat asked, What route will we take? We will attack from the wilderness of Edom, Joram replied. The king of Edom and his troops joined them, and all three armies traveled along a roundabout route through the wilderness for seven days. But there was no water for the men or their animals. What should we do? The king of Israel cried out. The Lord has brought the three of us here to let the king of Moab defeat us. But King Jehoshaphat of Judah asked, Is there no prophet of the Lord with us? If there is, we can ask the Lord what to do through him. 
one of King Joram's officers replied, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to be Elijah's personal assistant. Jehoshaphat said, Yes, the Lord speaks through him. So the kings of Israel, Judah, and Edom went to consult with Elisha. Why are you coming to me? Elisha asked the king of Israel. Go to the pagan prophets of your father and mother. But King Joram of Israel said, No, for it was the Lord who called us three kings here, only to be defeated by the king of Moab. Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, I wouldn't even bother with you except for my respect for King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Now bring me someone who can play the harp. While the harp was being played, the power of the Lord came upon Elisha, and he said, This is what the Lord says. This dry valley will be filled with pools of water. You will see neither wind nor rain, says the Lord, but this valley will be filled with water. You will have plenty for yourselves and your cattle and other animals. But this is only a simple thing for the Lord, for he will make you victorious over the army of Moab. You will conquer the best of their towns, even the fortified ones. You will cut down all their good trees, stop up all their springs, and ruin all their good land with stones. The next day, at about the time when the morning sacrifice was offered, water suddenly appeared. It was flowing from the direction of Edom, and soon there was water everywhere. Meanwhile, when the people of Moab heard about the three armies marching against them, they mobilized every man who was old enough to strap on a sword, and they stationed themselves along their border. But when they got up the next morning, the sun was shining across the water, making it appear red to the Moabites, like blood. It's blood, the Moabites exclaimed. The three armies must have attacked and killed each other. Let's go, men of Moab, and collect the plunder. But when the Moabites arrived at the Israelite camp, the army of Israel rushed out and attacked them until they turned and ran. The army of Israel chased them into the land of Moab, destroying everything as they went. They destroyed the towns, covered their good land with stones, stopped up all the springs, and cut down all the good trees. Finally, only Kir Hiraseth and its stone walls were left, but men with slings surrounded and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that he was losing the battle, he led seven hundred of his swordsmen in a desperate attempt to break through the enemy lines near the king of Edom, but they failed. Then the king of Moab took his oldest son, who would have been the next king, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. So there was great anger against Israel, and the Israelites withdrew and returned to their own land. Summary of Jehoshaphat's Reign Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the example of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The rest of the events in Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power, and the wars he raged are recorded in the Book of the History of the Kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the male and female shrine prostitutes who still continued their practices from the days of his father Asa. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sail to Ophir for gold. But the ships never set sail, for they met with disaster in their home port of ezion Geber. At one time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, had proposed to Jehoshaphat, Let my men sail with your men in the ships. But Jehoshaphat refused the request. So Jehoshaphat ruled over the land of Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the ways of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines, and the people never fully committed themselves to follow the God of their ancestors. The rest of the events of Jehoshaphat's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the record of Jehu son of Hanani, which is included in the book of the kings of Israel. Some time later, King Jehoshaphat of Judah made an alliance with King Ahaziah of Israel, who was very wicked. Together, they built a fleet of trading ships at the port of Ezion-Geber. 
Then Eliezer, son of Dodavehu from Merisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat. He said, Because you have allied yourself with King Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy your work. So the ships met with disaster and never put out to sea. From 1 Kings End of Jehoshaphat's Reign When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. From Second Chronicles When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. Jehoram's brothers, the other sons of Jehoshaphat, were Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariahu, Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Their father had given each of them valuable gifts of silver, gold, and costly items, and also some of Judah's fortified towns. However, he designated Jehoram as the next king because he was the oldest. But when Jehoram had become solidly established as king, he killed all his brothers and some of the other leaders of Judah. Jehoram rules in Judah. Jehoram, son of King Jehoshaphat of Judah, began to rule over Judah in the fifth year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. But Jehoram followed the example of the kings of Israel and was as wicked as King Ahab, for he had married one of Ahab's daughters. So Jehoram did what was evil in the Lord's sight. But the Lord did not want to destroy Judah, for he had made a covenant with David and promised that his descendants would continue to rule, shining like a lamp forever. During Jehoram's reign, the Edomites revolted against Judah and crowned their own king. So Jehoram went with all his chariots to attack the town of Zair. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he went out at night and attacked them under cover of darkness. But Jehoram's army deserted him and fled to their homes. So Edom has been independent from Judah to this day. The town of Libna also revolted about that same time. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. But Jehoram followed the example of the kings of Israel and was as wicked as King Ahab, for he had married one of Ahab's daughters. So Jehoram did what was evil in the Lord's sight. But the Lord did not want to destroy David's dynasty, for he had made a covenant with David and promised that his descendants would continue to rule, shining like a lamp forever.